I'm in a sports bra on the internet, so that can only mean one thing. Here's what I knit in 2022. I was looking at my Ravelry page of everything that I knit this year, and I am shocked at the things that made it into 2022. I mean, the things that I made at the beginning of 22, it honestly doesn't even feel like I knit this year. It has been such an insane year. Um, honestly, everything before like going to Europe feels like a completely different year time. So I will be showing you everything from January to December. That means there will be some overlap with everything that I knit in my first year of knitting video just because I want to get on an annual cycle with these kinds of things. Um, so if you watch that and you already know the things that I knit until May, feel free to skip until then. I will leave some timestamps down below, but this is going to be a long one, so let's get started. Now, I am shocked that I knit my Lume by Sari Nordlin in 2022. I actually started at the very tail end of 2021 this year and was bought with some Christmas money, a Christmas gift card to a local yarn store, and I made this completely in Cascade 220. This has probably been my most worn knit this year. I think. Um, I absolutely adore it. It is a nice oversized fit. It's just perfect. I brought this to England with me. I have slept in it. I have done flights in it. <laughs> I have just done everything with this. It is my go-to sweater. Um, it's already starting to um, felt just a little bit. Um, kind of, I don't think you'll be able to tell, but I can tell by like feeling it, it is starting to felt a little bit in the chest and under the arms, um, which is actually making the yarn so much softer. It's amazing to me feeling this Cascade 220 versus some other things that I knit later in Cascade 220 because the amount of times that I've worn this has just softened it so, so much. And so this continues to be one of my favorite knits of all time. I would love to make another Lume by Sorry Nordland. I think it's such an incredible pattern. I would maybe try a size down just because this ended up quite big and even though I love it for that I think it could um I would love one that was just like a little bit more cinched in just as much but what a what a knit to ring in 2022 because um yeah it is definitely one of my favorites now this knit is a little bit of a fail I actually don't mind the way that it's looking on camera right now but this is the bandana cowl by Pearl Soho I've got another one to show um in this so you'll be able to see what it's supposed to look like but this just ended up way too big um I had knit this in two strands of drops hair that was left over from my Sunday sweater, which is sadly felted, which is very unfortunate. But I thought that this would be a nice like oversized one that I could kind of put over my shoulders. And I was intentionally making it oversized, but I didn't account for just how much wider my shoulders were than my neck. And so it doesn't quite work out. And then I was like, you know what? It would make a really nice hood. Actually, I love the look of that. But the problem is, it doesn't have fabric on the back, so it would look absolutely ridiculous in any way but the front. So I actually don't end up wearing this very much at all, um, just because it doesn't tuck into jackets very well. But it is so soft. I think the idea of making one of these with drops there is a good one. I would actually like to um, rip this out and re-knit it. I just think I did it at too loose of a gauge, and maybe I could probably get away with just one strand instead of two. But um, yeah, I've had it on my list of things to do to rip this out and re-knit it for a long time now, and maybe 2023 will be the year that I do that. So next we have a vest that I call the Vest 2.5. It is a combination of the Vest Number 2 and the Vest Number 3 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I knit this completely in thrifted fibers, and I remember knitting this around the time that I first got on Instagram. And so this is one strand, the brown is a strand of Cascade 220, and then the white is a strand of Ice Yarns Alpaca. And I think that they've made such a lovely marl combination. I actually don't wear this as much as I maybe should. There's a few tops that I really like it with. And I don't know, I probably could wear it as a tank, but it's probably a little warm for summer. And I don't know when else I would wear it, but I do really like the way that it turned out. Excuse me. Um, it's in a cropped length. So I actually tend to wear, I've got some like dress shirts and a baby doll. And so this sits right around where the flare happens. And I find that it just gives a little bit of warmth to an outfit and ends up working out really, really well. So, 
yeah, I quite like the way that this turned out. I've worn it to work quite a bit with those dress shirts, so I would love to make more slipovers and vests. That is definitely on my list of things to make more of in 2023. I am shocked that my first muscle burrow was in 2022. It feels like I've been making this pattern for a long, long time. This is one that I think was in my very first episode of the podcast that I actually dyed myself a navy blue. It was in a beautiful yarn that was both blue and yellow, but the way that it um, the yarn knit up at this gauge and at this um, circumference, it was pooling a lot and I just didn't love the way that it looked. It ended up looking like weird messy stripes, so I ended up just dyeing it with some Brit dye in this navy blue, and I wear this hat all the time. It's definitely not perfect in terms of the dye job, but it's just such a neutral color that I find myself reaching for it a lot, and it has gotten a lot of wear. So this sweater is my very first test set and it was definitely an ambitious one for me. This was probably the most cabling I think that I'd ever done up until this point and it is just so much cabling. Um, this is the Marzipan Pullover by Sari Nordland. Um, you can tell that Sari Nordland is one of my favorite designers. I've got more of her designs coming up but it has this beautiful cabling pattern all over the yoke and then goes into a two by two rib and then into a one by one rib. And yeah, I really love the way that this turns out. Um, this dark eggplanty purple was a new color for me. And I think that I'm glad I have one purple sweater in my wardrobe, but I think I would definitely wear this more if it was in more of a neutral color. I was actually gonna do it in a gray, but the gray, this is in Cascade 220. The gray that my local yarn store had was a gray that I had already used in a different project. And so I decided to go with this purple to just kind of do something new. And while I really love it, I feel like Again, I would reach for it a lot more if it was in a different color. I just love the way that this yoke looks. I really like the way that it lays and it has a doubled up neckband as well, which I think I've had to put some elastic in. I find that I have to put some elastic in most of my doubled up neckbands to the point where now I just do it automatically. Um, but yeah, I love the details in this sweater and I think I would consider making it again. I just remember that the two by two ribbing all down the sleeves and all down the body was a bit of a slag for me, but I was also a bit of a new knitter and I think I could bang that out a lot faster now. I think that Sari Nordland, I've seen hints on her Instagram that she's making an all over or more all over cabled pattern with this like crazy cabling. So I would definitely be interested in trying something like that. I would just be a little bit concerned that it would cinch in too much. So I'm really interested to see how she pulls it off because I'm not one for uh, form fitting sweaters by any means. So. Yes, Mars Pan Pullover. So this one is my second muscle burrow. This was knit in, again, thrifted fibers. Um, this was knit in one strand of uh, Allegra, Manos del Uruguay Alleg Allegria, and then one strand of Knit Picks, not Swish, nope. They're fingering weight. They're they're like more affordable fingering weight wool that I can't remember the name of right now. But it created this beautiful marling effect. Um, the only thing that I wish I had done with this hat is done a bit more of a stretchy bind off. It's really quite stiff. And I find that sometimes as what if I don't situate the hat right on my head, it can make the top um billow a lot more than I thought, or than I think it should, and then this will kind of billow out as well but other than that i really love it this is my first time doing modified muscle burrow which i do quite often now um where i knit the muscle burrow it's a top down hat and usually you make a tube but i just cut mine off with ribbing and so i don't complete the full muscle burrow um and i think that's a really lovely way to get a muscle burrow a little bit faster and just a different look for a hat which i also enjoy so Although I haven't gotten as much wear out of this hat just because of some of the puckering issues, um, I really love the color combination and I actually think I have enough yarn to try and re-knit this and to do a little bit better next time. So this was my first test knit fail. And I think my only fail so far, um, but this was a test knit for Gregoria Fibers. This is their Bina V-neck and I was testing it in one of their larger sizes and it was set to be an oversized fit on me, which it definitely is, which I was expecting and was totally fine with. I was knitting this in a thrifted fiber. This is Knit Picks. 
It's a discontinued fiber. It's like a um, beautiful silk alpaca blend. And actually it's not feeling as scratchy now as it did when I had first done it. I wasn't actually too impressed with this fiber and I can see why it was discontinued. So you can check my Ravelry page if you wanna see all of the exact details on that. The biggest problem that I had with this test knit is because I was knitting it in a larger size and it was graded later on to larger sizes, um, the V-neck was way too low. So if you can see it's black, so it's a little difficult. I ended up sewing up the middle the v-neck to try and just cinch it in and I was lucky that I had enough room in the sweater to be able to do that because I was knitting an oversized version for myself. I also ended up chopping the sleeves so they're not full size. The original they are full size and I did that just because of how oversized fit this was but considering all of that I have had this in my two frog pile for a while. I think that the design now that it's been fixed up is actually quite nice but I don't think it was suited to this yarn and I don't think it was graded correctly when I was testing it. It has since been fixed so if this is something that you really like. I love the way that she did her neckline. It's actually not ribbing, it's knit and I think that's a really cool look. You're not really able to see it in the black as much but I think that it was a really cool idea. She had originally done hers in more of a fluffy blown yarn and I think that that would have suited this pattern a lot more. Um, but I learned a lot in this test knit and I learned what it really means to be a test knitter and I really enjoyed that process. So this is a test knit that went a little bit better for me. Um, this is the Kenley Pullover by Fine Fiber Co. And I knit this in Knit Picks Palette, which is the yarn that I was thinking of before and couldn't remember. And their lace alpaca cloud, I don't know. <laughs> yarn. I think that there's a longer name for it, um, but they're both nitpicks. And um, I did the lace alpaca as a mohair substitute, just to put something lace in there. This was initially knit with um, either a DK and a mohair or two strands of fingering in a mohair, I don't remember. But I think that this combination turned out perfectly. I actually bought this yarn on the Knit Picks website with the intention of making sweater number eight. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll do sweater number 15 with it. I did end up making a 15 and I'll show that later. But I think that it was the perfect yarn combination with this. I really love the way that it turned out, but it is a little bit wonky. <laughs> I did mess it up in a few sections and it was of no fault of the designers, they are lovely, um, but it was just me not knowing what I was doing. So I think um, this may have been my first bottom up sweater. If not, it was like my second. It was not something that I was used to at all. And I had very little experience. No, it was my second because I did a weekender and I had very little experience with the three needle bind off. And so when they said to do it backwards, I didn't realize what they meant. And so I have a visible seam here which I actually don't mind too much, but this is definitely meant to be on the inside. Thankfully, mine's quite neat, so I don't mind that. But the other thing is that I messed up where the cables sit on this side. On the other side. Yeah, I messed up where the cables sit, so they actually don't match up exactly. And I've counted my stitches. I have no idea how I did it, but I know that it's a me thing because no one else had this problem. And so it's just a little bit wonky. I think if you were further away, you can actually see it a little bit more. So I actually really love this pattern. Um, this uh, moss stitch is one of my favorite stitches. You'll see it in some other knits coming up. Um, but... I, yeah, I just kind of messed it up a little bit. Um, not enough that I would rip this out. I actually wear this quite a bit. I really love this combination. I would totally use this alpaca lace, an alternative of a mo, excuse me, of a mohair again, especially when added to a worsted weight, it adds some drape to the fabric um, where mohair adds fluff. This adds drape and often I really love drape in a woolly garment and it's also just so soft. And it picks palette, I think is such a good yarn and I would opt for two strands of palette over their um, Andy's worsted any day. Um, I think that the difference between the two is night and day and I would definitely choose their palette yarn over their Wool of the Andes or something like that. Their like main worsted yarn. So anyways, I really like the way that this sweater turned out. I think I might do a thicker neckline if I were to do it again. I actually think it was a doubled up neckline and I had some yarn issues and so I ended up just doing it single and I think it looks absolutely fine. I think that I in the last year had just really loved a thicker 
like more pronounced neckline and that was something that I didn't like a year ago so I understand why I knit it in this way and I would love to make another one I think that the cabling is so I don't know it just it's um what am I trying to say here it's kind of minimal and I really like that with all the like crazy all over cable stuff that's been coming out I really like the simple minimal cabling I just think it's a really great design so here is another test knit that could have gone a lot better <laughs> I feel like I had a string of test knits that um were not my favorite there and it was a little bit discouraging I remember at the time just because I just felt like I couldn't get anything right but I I had no forgiveness for myself I was still in my first year of knitting and um I was doing some really advanced techniques so I definitely need to be a little bit more generous with myself um but this is the Everbloom Carnigan by Evergreen Knits and she Tess is such a lovely person and designer that I had to sign up for her test knit and I think that this is a really lovely design I just was duped and messed up um so i had this rowan um super soft something yarn in my stash that i had thrifted it's a nice mint green and when i signed up for the test knit, i was like oh my gosh i have that in my stash it will be perfect for it only as you can tell that is not the only thing that this was knit in um <laughs> It, uh, I didn't have enough of it. So basically the yardage that it said on the tin, um, I had weighed it and it was actually wrong. And um, I don't know if I somehow got a used ball and didn't realize it, or um, they were just really good at putting that back in the label, or if something, if it was discontinued by Rowan because they were having trouble with their weights, but it ended up that I just didn't have enough of this yarn to finish this cardigan um and so you can see look at that so smooth um <laughs> uh you know while wearing it it's pretty comfy but i had to finish it off with some michael's polyester yarn and so this white and this blue are loops and thread and they were the closest that i can get so this was a one ply wool yarn and this is the only like one ply that looked similar and as you can tell it is pilling like crazy and i've barely worn this thing just because i find this polyester a little bit itchy on the skin i think that it turned out the look of it turned out okay um I really have no complaints. I love the pockets on it, but because it's not the most comfortable, it's not really something that I've worn very often. Sometimes I'll reach for it in my office, but I just think, I just wish I could have done the whole thing in this mint green because I think this is so unbelievably soft that it would be lovely to have a full cardigan in it. And I'm really sad that I couldn't at least finish the body of the cardigan. Like if I had just had to do the edging in this white, it would have been fine. And I don't mind the color blocking, but it just didn't work out for me. And I was looking at more premium yarn options, but with the deadline of the test and what I else I had going on, there was no like one ply yarn option in the yarn stores near me. And so I just kind of had to go with what I could find. So maybe I'll fix this, but honestly, I doubt it. Um, I think that this is just gonna stay as it is and I'll continue reaching for it in my office. These are the things you learn when you're knitting things. So here is a cardigan that went a lot better for me. This is the Thaka cardigan, or it's Taka. I always had an H in the wrong spot. It's a Finnish word. It's a Sari Nordland cardigan pattern. And she had released this just around the same time that she had released the marzipan and the test knits for both went out around the same time. And I applied to both, got accepted for the marzipan, which I'm so glad that I did, but I also really loved this cardigan. It is done in a bulky weight yarn and I had bought a um, special gift for myself for Christmas, which was the Bowl yarn by the Project Weekend. They are a small yarn uh, crater and dyer that's based out of, I think, Vancouver, Canada, and they create this beautiful fluffy yarn that is out of Peruvian wool. And I had first discovered them in Collingwood. They had some of their yarns at a smaller maker shop there, and I bought it when I was very new to knitting. And I have a beautiful bandana cowl out of it, and I love it. It is such a soft yarn, but it is such a soft yarn that this thing is pilling like crazy, and I think is actually not as suited to garments as I would have liked. The um, company does a lot of knitting kits where they make hats and cowls and scarves, and they do make some sweaters, but I think that this yarn is 
much, much better suited to accessories because it is so soft and I would say a little bit delicate. And so I mostly wear this cardigan at home, um, kind of like the other one, but I reach for this one a lot more because it is so unbelievably soft. Um, I had just depilled this pretty recently, but you can see there's a little bit of a halo on it and it is just like the softest yarn. Um, and this color actually also wasn't quite what I was expecting. Um, when I ordered it online, I had bought a set of six skeins and this actually only used uh, four and a half. So that was really impressive. Um, it also made it a little bit cropped because I thought I was going to wear it with jeans. Um, and it does look good with these jeans, but um, I don't often wear it out. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, the color online looked much more like a burnt orange and this ended up being a lighter orange than I had expected leaning on yellow and I don't mind that but I think that it would have looked a little bit better had it been the color that I thought it was going to be um but I've grown to love this color a lot too and I would love to get my hands I wish that I could get it more accessibly in my area um because I would love to make some more accessories I think that they'd be perfect for gift knit hats um but because I have to order online, I kind of have to make a bigger order if I decide I'm going to get yarn from them again. But I think that this was a beautiful knit. It doesn't have any buttons, so it kind of tends to fall off. But I think if I had like a pin, that would look good with this sweater as well. But I really like this and I would definitely consider making it again. It's another muscle burrow, y'all. This is probably my most worn. It is made in the thickest yarn of my muscle burrows, and so it keeps my ears so unbelievably warm. The way that this is knit um, around the ears is actually four layers of wool, which is great. Um, this is done in leftover wool from my Weekender Pullover by Andrea Mowry. This is the Estelle Worsted, so it means it's an acrylic and wool blend, and it smells so good. I don't know what it is with this yarn. It smells amazing i don't know what's going on um but you can tell it's definitely a little bit rattier i think the acrylic makes it pill a little bit more and maybe not look as nice but i still wear it to death because it's a great color and um it just it's it's warm and it's nice and we just had a bout of negative 30 and you better bet i was wearing this hat because it's the warmest hat i own i would love to make another muscle burrow in a thicker yarn. The um, pattern is definitely a lot more suited to thinner yarns, but I could get away with a worsted, so definitely something to try out in the future. Well, this looks a little bit ridiculous, but um, this is the Nurture Bralette by Celine Faden, I think is her last name. Um, it is a bralette pattern that I test knit for her and I'm just not taking on my sports bra right now. I find that this bralette is a little bit revealing. Um, the main thing about this is that you shape the cups as short rows, which is why um, this looks a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> um, the sports bra that I'm wearing kind of squishes down the girls and if they were lying properly, it would fill this out, but now it looks a little silly. Um, but it's a really nice pattern. I had tested this for her and I remember banging this out in like a week. It is a really nice pattern. I wear this occasionally when I'm just lounging on the house. I don't find that it really offers any support and I definitely had to put some elastic around the waist and along this back band um, to give it a little bit more of a tight fit, more of what I'm looking for in a bralette. To be honest, I don't think knitted bralettes are for me. Um, so I learned that in this chest knit, but I do think it's a lovely design either way. Um, yeah, I just kind of love more. This one's from Airy, and I just love more of the, whoop, like tight fit. And I'm just not sure you would ever get that enough, like, stucking in, in a knit fabric. Um, so yeah, I would definitely consider ripping this out. I had done this in stress yarns in the color Eucalyptus, which I bought on a whim, and I would love to probably make something a little bit more, something I'd wear a little bit more often with it, because I do think that the yarn is just such a lovely color. It's got like these blue specks in it. I think it's beautiful. I've got another skein over there somewhere. Um, but yeah, definitely learned a lot in this test knit. No regrets at all. I think it's a lovely pattern. I just don't think it's, for me, so the more you learn. So this is a ranunculus. Um, this is the second ranunculus that I made, but it's the only one still in existence. So I ended up frogging my first one, which didn't quite work out, which you can see. In my last one I knit in a year video, or when I knit in my first year of knitting, 
whatever. Um, this is knit completely in drops air and I had had this brown colored in stash for a while. This used like three and a half bowls of it. <laughs> so I actually have a lot more of it. Um, and part of the reason is I decided to do half sleeves on this. I was thinking of this more as a blouse and as a transitional spring piece. I think I knit this around April-ish last year and I was thinking it would be really nice to wear when I bring out some of my skirts. And it was really great for that but I think the problem is is that we have such a short spring where I live that I didn't actually end up getting a lot of use out of this because it got warm pretty quick so while I absolutely love this I think I would consider ripping it out and using something else with the yarn it's definitely not immediate and I'm definitely still wearing this so it's not that I don't like it at all but I just feel like it's a transitional piece that I won't get a lot of wear out of. Um, the other thing that I could do is rip out the sleeves and make full sleeves on it, which I would definitely consider doing as well. I really like the half sleeves. I just put them in on a, um, uh, what's that called? The bind off with the, with the edging. It's escaped me, but I like the way that it looks. Um, I really like that this is more of a blouse as opposed to a sweater. I don't really have much like it, um, but I do think for that reason, I'm just not getting as much wear out of it when it's negative 10 outside and I'm not looking for a blouse. Um, and then I need a sweater to go over top of it. And I don't really have any like cardigans that I've made that really suits this, nor am I a huge fan of like wool on wool because I feel like they kind of scrape up against each other. Maybe that's just a me thing. I've done it, but I don't love it necessarily. But anyways, I really love this design. I really like it for summer tops. I've got another one to show. I just find myself, I keep going back to the ridiculous if I have like a smaller, um, amount of yarn that I want to be able to get a garment out of it. I think the ranunculus is perfect. I would just say that for me, I prefer the ranunculus in a DK weight or above yarn. So DK to worsted, I would say. Um, just because I've done it in a sport weight and I thought it was too loose of a gauge for my personal preference. But I would just say to look at the other people who have made ranunculuses and see what their fabrics look like and try and pick a fabric that's close to the one that you like both best. But I definitely like a thicker fabric on my ranunculi. Ranunculuses, who knows? We're getting into summer knitting, y'all. This is the Camp number six by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is done in a big chunky rib and I made it in a cropped length. This is done with knitting for Olive. I think she had initially done the merino and for whatever reason I read that it's the cotton merino. So I knit this in the cotton merino and they're pure silk and it's definitely more of a summer garment for that reason. For whatever reason though, I don't find myself reaching for this very often. I think if I want a top like this, I usually opt for a bra top like I'm wearing underneath it. And I found it a little bit difficult to find a bra that both like looks good with the girls, but also looks good with this top. I just can't find like the combination and I don't want to be buying a bra for the top. So I've toyed with the idea of like trying to sew cups in, but I think that this is too low to make that feasible. I don't know. I've seen other people wear it a lot and it looks really amazing. And I think it actually does look really good on camera right now, but I think the logistics of wearing it are just a little bit too difficult for me. Um, I love the fabric that it's created. I really love uh, knitting for all of pure silk. I quite like their cotton merino as well. I knit this in and around when I was in Copenhagen and I got the yarn at the Knitting for Olive store. So this definitely is a special place in my heart. I do, however, have extra of both the cotton and the pure silk. So I would definitely consider ripping this out to make something else with it. Just so, I don't know, it's something that I wear a little bit more. That said, I really, I, I don't know, I like the way that this looks and I love the color. Um, so I'm a little bit conflicted on this one, but I mean, I had such a time with summer knits this summer that I think that this is a win. I had to re-knit the whole thing. It was, it was a nightmare. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know what? I like the way that this has turned out and um, yeah, maybe I can just find more ways to wear it a little bit more this summer. 
I might just be being a little bit dramatic about it. So we have another ranunculus. This is my summer ranunculus. It is the third one that I made and it is by far my favorite ranunculus. I had initially not really considered the ranunculus as a summer pattern, but I had seen someone else make a summer top out of it and he said, you know what, let's try it. It's a pattern that I already have. I don't have to buy something else for this yarn. That's perfect. And so this was actually somewhat inspired by the camisole number six in that I combined the Knitting for All of Pure Silk with a cotton. This is the this one that comes in the little balls. I've got more of it, hold on. Sky, um, it's the Cray Deluxe Organic Cotton. This is in a green, future knit, but I've got mine in the yellow. And they actually match unbelievably well, the two colors. Um, but yeah, I made it in a bigger neckline. This neckline is actually stretched out a little bit since I first wore it i think it's just the virtue of silk it wants to like weigh down so i don't know if putting elastic in here would help that a little bit but it's not too bad but i just love the way that the eyelets ended up looking on this i can wear a bra with it which is lovely it's a perfect cropped length that i can wear with skirts or with pants and i just love this shirt i would love to make more of it this is what i was actually thinking that i might turn my camisole number six into i think i have enough um, this used up two of the Pure Silk and three of the Crayon Deluxe. Um, so that's not very much at all. I think it's around 500 meters of yarn, if not less. So it's perfect. I love the color. I just love everything about this. This is by far my favorite summer knit that I made this year. Now, I might have just lied to y'all because I just said that that was a favorite summer knit. But I think this is by far my most worn summer knit, so that might make this my favorite summer knit by um, default. Um, this is the Rosenland Top by Sari Nordland. It is an all over lace design, lace and cable design, and it is just stunning. Um, it's the same on the front and the back. It has some longer neck holes. I would usually wear it with a bralette, just like this one. I've actually got a one that's a little bit more skin color that I find myself reaching for to wear with this. Um, I love how like generous this section is up here. I think I could have actually sized down, but I just love it. I think it is so beautiful. I've received so many compliments on this when I wear it out. Everyone is asking me where it came from. I gotta say, I made it myself. Um, and if it wasn't such a arduous knit, I would have already cast on a second one. Um, this thing took forever. Uh, <laughs> it is knit, I think on like three and a half millimeter needles and it is just like nonstop cabling in lace and it is, a beautiful result but I needed a break <laughs> after knitting this it was so much so much knitting um but I love I love the result of it um yeah now that I'm wearing it again I've worn it a bit just because it's been cold um I do sometimes wear it under cardigans so that's a good transitional piece but because it's so holy it's just not super weather appropriate um but now that I'm looking at it again, I do kind of want to cast another one on. So we will see. Um, this was knit in Samusgarn. Is it Cots? It is their cotton merino blend yarn. The Ravelry details will have all of the details down below. Um, but yeah, this was a really really fun project for me a really exhausting project for me um but a really rewarding one i love 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 the finished object of the rosalind top now i told you there'd be another bandana cowl welcome um so this one is knit the way it's intended to be you can tell it's a little bit or a lot more cinched in um this is really how it's supposed to fit it's supposed to be much more narrower on the neck so that it's supposed to hug it a lot more and if you pulled it up over your nose it would kind of stay um which makes it a much nicer um winter piece and it's meant to be worn with jackets that kind of come over like more of a trench coat style which is my favorite style of jacket Excuse me, and this is perfect. I'm drinking too much coffee. Um, delicious. So this was knit in light and lace superwash merino um, in 
Oh, they're black walnut color, I think. And this was paired by a yarn that I found in Copenhagen, which is the onion, um, onions mohair silk blend. And that onion mohair silk blend is to die for. I found it on clearance and, or did I get it in London? Got it in Europe. Um, I'm obsessed with this color. It is so beautiful. I actually think I have enough of both of the yarns to make a matching hat. So that is definitely in the future. Um, I will say that this ended up a little bit scratchy, but I think it's more so because I'm inside and it's way too warm to be wearing something like this in the house, or it is with me walking and talking and standing. Um, but yeah, it is such a beautiful combination and I love the bandana cowl. It is the perfect quick knit. I don't know if it would necessarily be the best gift knit. I think it depends on what kind of jacket the other person wears because I think it can look kind of funky when you're um, gifting it to someone it's just because it looks like a bandana. And I don't know how many people are just wearing something that like looks like this, but it looks great when it has a coat over top of it. And it's kind of hard to explain that to someone if you know what I mean. So anyway, I love my bandana cowls. Um, and this one has been probably my most worn of this winter so far. So this is my Snow Crackers by Midori Hirose. Um, they're the same people that made the Ranunculus and they have become some of my favorite designers in this past year. Um, this is a beautiful all over cabled pattern with some beautiful detailing down the arm. You can get that double moss stitch again and it is just a stunning pattern. I did have a bit of trouble with the neckline and I'm still not completely satisfied with the way that it's looking. It is supposed to be like a weird not mock neck situation and I think that I just used too soft of a yarn to make it do what it's supposed to do. So I've actually had to add a lot of elastic into this pattern. So I have added elastic from here here to here to tighten up this so that it sits more taut. I found that this was really stretching out this uh, cable around my shoulder so that this was hitting like here. Um, and it just looked kind of weird. So I added elastic in both sides. I've also added a thing of elastic along the bottom of the neck band and along the top so that it would both sit up but also cinch right here. So I think it turned out okay. You really can't tell that there's elastic in it, but I wish that this sweater just had a different neckline and I was gonna just modify it, but I can't, I don't know how I do it. And so I'm just leaving it for now, but I love, excuse me, the rest of the sweater so much that um, it doesn't even matter. I wear it all the time. And this also started my love affair with wool stock worsted. It is a stunning worsted weight yarn. It comes in these like, tonker skeins of 150 grams. I love it. Um, and yeah, it only needs three of those. So that's really awesome. Um, I just love this knit. I would love to do it in a different color. And I just wish, I wish someone would come up with a modification for the neckline, because if there was, I would knit that in a heartbeat. Um, it is a really fast, memorable pattern. And um, I really, really love the way that this turned out. So this is the Moonset Tea by Ozetta. It is made completely in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in this haze color and then the blue color from my camisole number six. It is a beautiful drop shoulder pattern. Um, I did modify it a little bit. I usually would pick up for sleeves here. I just left them raw. I think it looks perfectly fine like that. Um, hers go down to like here, but I feel like because I'm so petite, it just wouldn't really work well on my body. And I really quite like the design of this. I love the crossover neck here. I just think knitting in completely pure silk shows off any kind of knitting problems you may ever have in life. And so I don't love the way that it looks kind of up here and the way that it pulls. I don't know if that's me or just like the pattern. I've seen a lot of other people have that same problem. I don't even really know if it's a problem, but this is so light and airy. It is perfect if you want to cover up on the hottest days, but you don't want to be sweating. Um, such a beautiful fabric. I really love the color blocking. I think it's quite slimming too. Um, and yeah, I just really love the way that this turned out. I think the pickup is quite nice. The neckline, I think it turned out really well as, as well. Um, as it also has sweater patterns with this kind of design and I think it would be really well suited to wool. So I might end up making one of those eventually. I just love all the designs that it says that it comes out with basically. And um, this is a really good introduction to her patterns. 
So this is the Lucy blouse. It is a test knit for Louisa. And I knit this in um, some thrifted mohair that I found at Value Village. This mohair was such a hit that I ended up selling a lot of my extra because I had two kilos, two kilos of this yarn. So um, it is um, pretty crazy pattern. Um, I don't think that if I didn't have like the thrifted yarn, I don't know if I would necessarily buy mohair for this yarn. I think it's beautiful. Like the pattern is beautiful, but it's just so much mohair. And I don't wear this very much at all, just because the occasion in which I need a full mohair sweater is almost none. And a full mohair like kind of dressy sweater it really goes down to not a lot. I really like the way that this looks, but I just, I don't know, it's more of a going out shirt and I just haven't, oh, Swift, um, gone out a lot this year in the country at least. And I'm scared to pack this because I'm scared it will get caught in a zipper. Um, but <laughs> I really love the way that it looks. I think that the, the increases in this half fisherman rib looks so intentional and I just love the way that it turned out. I would love to make something like this in like a drops air. I think that it would really suit the pattern, um, but maybe feel a little bit less delicate to be wearing. Um, I've seen other people wear theirs a lot. I think I'm just being a little bit dramatic and I honestly, I think I learned that for me, mohair is not something I want to knit a whole garment in. It is something that I want to add to garment and not to like have as a standalone because um, this sweater just reads excessive to me. <laughs> and I mean, it is in the best way, but not in a very wearable way. So while I like to admire this cardigan, um, I don't always love to wear it. But look at that yarn. I mean, it is gorgeous. I also had to shave this because the mohair is so like the the threads were sticking up so much that it was also my first adventure in shaving mohair, which was fun in and of itself. So this is the last of the summer tops. This is the Riento Tea by Sarah Nordland again. Um, I just, again, love everything she does. <laughs> um, so this is a beautiful um, actual t-shirt pattern, um, but I adapted it and she has instructions of how to adapt it into a tank top pattern. She does ribbing around all of the outline though, and I decided to just crochet it closed. Um, I just don't love a lot of bulk on my summer knits just because I feel like they make me look a little bit wider and because I'm so petite I just want it to like more elongate my frame rather than kind of bring me out. Um, the original pattern has puff sleeves and I think that they're lovely I just don't think that they'd suit me at all and I had a bit of a yarn crisis. Um, so this was knit in Santa Scarlina um, and I bought it in Copenhagen but I started knitting the top when I was back in Canada and I had um, bought three balls of it thinking it would be enough and it was not and I needed a fourth ball and it turns out it's impossible to get in Canada so a huge thank you again to Karen from Norway who sent me lovingly sent me two balls of it I still have another one left over because I only needed one ball but she lives next to the Santa Scarn outlet factory store and so she was able to pick them up for a really affordable price her daughter's from Canada and it kind of went boom 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 and it talked to me I was and I'm still so grateful because I love the way that this shirt turns out it's so intensely wearable and it's so simple I actually had a an H&M top that was cotton and was the same silhouette and I wore it to death there are are literal holes in it. I still wear it to bed. I really love the silhouette of it and this is the closest I've gotten to having a shirt like that again and for that reason I already have yarn to knit it in black. It'll probably be the first summer cast on. Um, it is again the um, moss stitch all through the body with very simple lace pattern panels on each side. It's just such a simple knit and it goes by pretty fast and I We'll probably have a wardrobe of these just because it is, well, perhaps not the best looking. It is the most probably versatile, the most easy shirt to throw on. And I found myself wearing this even in the winter with heavy cardigans just because it's so easy to throw on as a tank top. I love it. Guys, we finally have a test knit that was 100% successful.
can we get a round of applause? <laughs> this is the Pippin sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. Um, she has some absolutely lovely designs um, and I actually got to meet Sophie this year, which was absolutely amazing. Um, so when she had the tester call for this, I said, pick me please. And thankfully she did. It is such a lovely, simple raglan sweater. Um, it is, I think called a sand stitch. And it's a really easy repeat pattern that I think just looks gorgeous. Um, I actually worked for my office. I'm a medievalist and they said it looks a little bit like medieval chainmail, and I will take it. Um, I don't really see it, but I will take it. Um, it is has a stunning folded over neckline. I just love everything about this sweater, including the yarn. I picked up this yarn in New England at Webb's and it is the Jaeger spun sport weight yarn. This pattern actually calls for light DK, um, but it was around this time when I was realizing that everything I knit, <laughs> it's big because my stitches, my gauge, I always knit loose, it turns out. And also my stitches are quite tall. Um, and it took me over a year to figure this out about myself. I'm not going to ask questions. I gauge swatch sometimes, and I always check gauge, and I always fix it, but it is a problem in my life. <laughs> um, yes, but I just love the way that this turns out. I would love to knit another, I would love to knit another in this yarn. Um, I don't think I can find Jaeger Spun in Canada, so I'd have to order from Webs again, um, which is a bit of a mission for me. Um, but if I ever do a Webs order again, this will absolutely be in my cart. I think it's amazing and I can definitely see another one of these in my future. I mean, look at this neckline, it's stunning. I can't get over how amazing her designs and how intentional her designs are. They're just great. I can't wait to knit a whole lot more of them. So this is the Miles shirt jacket by Ozetta. I wear shirt jackets all the time. So when I saw this come out as a test knit, I applied, I did not get it. It was devastating, um, but I did knit it when it came out. This is in, uh, oh, I'm gonna mess this up again. Uh, Lopi. The unspun lopi, Pluto lopi. This is in Pluto lopi. It was my first kind of foray into unspun yarn, and I really like the fabric. It's created. It's definitely itchy. Um, it is a lopi yarn still, but definitely not as itchy as like my Alifloss lopi. Um, and I really love this. I think again the Swift. <laughs> I think the only problem with it is one. I definitely knit the sleeves too long. Um, it definitely grew about an inch or so. Um, but I do roll them and I think it's totally fine. Um, my bigger problem is that this is definitely more of a jacket for me. And again, we just don't get a lot of spring and fall here. And so I don't actually have many occasions to wear this. Um, I had plans to make this in a lighter color and I still would love to a light gray, but I just don't know how feasible or like responsible that is when there's only like a couple weeks every year that something like this would actually make sense. I mean, I will wear it to death those couple weeks, but I just don't necessarily want to be knitting for those couple weeks specifically. I would love to see, and I haven't explored the Ravelry page enough, I'm sure someone has done this, but I would love to see what this would look like in more of a softer yarn. Cause I think it would make a really nice cardigan. I think that this like detailing up here is really nice. Um, mine did turn out a little oversized, um, and I like it that way. I had intended it for the, it to be that way, but, um, I think it might make a really cute cardigan and then I can wear it a little bit more often. So I would love again to make this over again. I'd always intended to make more than one, but I think reflecting upon it, uh, I may not make another one in the lopi. I may make another one in something softer that I can wear more as a cardigan and wear to work. So while I do love this pattern, it's not necessarily practical for Ontario weather. Um, and that's a-okay. Not everything needs to be made for me. I mean, look at this pickup. Look at how beautiful this is. So intentional. I love the design. And the drop shoulder I find on all of Ozetta's patterns always hit me so low. <laughs> um, I have a feeling, I don't know if this is true, but I have a feeling that Haley's tall. Um, and that's why her patterns tend to hit me so low, is that she probably has more shoulder um, and longer arms. So, I mean, nothing wrong with that, but and I actually quite like the way that a lower um, box hits on my arm. Um, like, for example, here's my elbow and here's <laughs> here it is. Um, I'm actually test knitting a pattern for her right now, which I'll show you. Um, and it has the same thing. So I have a feeling it's just kind of how her patterns sit on me. 
that's totally fine because almost everything she knits is intended to be oversized and I'm very happy with an oversized fit on sweaters. It is my preferred fit anyways. I'll stop rambling on. So this is a sweater that I designed on the fly. It is a very simple raglan and I have lovingly called it my Wellington raglan because it is made completely out of Wellington Fibers, which is a fiber company that is local to me here in Ontario. Um, I was able to buy the sport weight thread, which is 70% wool and 30% mohair at a local yarn fair to me. And then I went on a marketplace that night and someone was selling a 70% mohair, 30% wool in the same color for really affordable price. And I ended up buying that and pairing them together. And it was a match made in heaven. Um, you can't even tell that there's two fibers in this. They blend so seamlessly together. And so although the two um, yarns were different weights, it pretty much equates that this uh, sweater is half mohair and half wool. I will say though that the mohair of Wellington fibers isn't as fluffy as mohair from other companies that I've tried. It doesn't seem like it's a kid's look mohair, it's just mohair. And so it's definitely a little bit scratchier than wool, I find. Um, I find them definitely more sensitive to mohair than I am to wool. Um, I'm running out of breath here. I have been filming for too long. Let me take a drink. So I decided to do a two by two ribbing on this. Um, bring the two by two down in the raglan, do some straight sleeves with an extended ribbing there and an extended ribbon ribbing on the bottom. I actually wish I had extended this ribbing quite a bit more, but I wasn't sure how that would look in a two by two as opposed to like a one by one. But anyway, I really like the way that this sweater turned out. I definitely had a lot of trouble with the neckline, um, kind of growing not growing, but like cinching up on me. I think I finally fixed that after re-knitting it about three times. This is what you get for designing your own pattern on the fly. Um, I basically just knit the raglan until I knew it was deep enough and then went into sleeves, split the body, whatever. Um, and I would definitely do that again. Um, but I do think that there's something really nice about um, just following pattern that someone else has done for you. Um, and it definitely taught me that I don't think I could design on the fly. I think I'd have to do a lot of math beforehand, which I think is the way that you're kind of supposed to do it anyways. But as someone who's thought about the idea of designing, this was definitely a good, um, a good test for me just to see what the process would be like, even as something super duper simple as just a raglan, a two by two raglan. But I do like the way that this turned out. I do tend to wear a shirt underneath that just because I do find it a little bit scratchy, but it is more of a rustic fiber company. So that's kind of what I expected anyway. And the drape on it, I don't know if you can really tell just because it's bulky fabric, maybe here, it is beautiful. The drape on that mohair is stunning. So yeah, this looks ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I think we're almost done, which is crazy. A lot of what I knit from here on forward were gift knits, so I just have a couple FOs that were actually for me. This is the Tulip Guernsey by Midori Rose, and this is by far my favorite knit of the second half of the year, at the very least. Um, it was right up there with my Pippin sweater, but I think that this takes the cake just because of the color and just the fit. It's stunning. Um, this was a design that I didn't actually think I was going to knit and then I was looking at the yarn and I was like, actually, this is it. Um, so this is um, Amble by the Fiber Co that I had found in the same fair that I got the Wellington Fibers and it is a fingering weight wool and I paired that with the Santa Scarn mohair and it has created just this stunning fabric. Um, the mohair doesn't completely match the yarn and so if I like bring you here on the bust, you can see that the colors don't match completely, but that's okay with me. Um, from afar, you can't really tell at all. I based this is a uh, dis I based my design on one of the test knitters who did this, who did these shorter three quarter length sleeves with a um, garter edging, and I think it looks really good. It really mimics 
kind of this section of the pattern and I just love the way that it turned out. I knew that I wasn't going to have enough yarn for full sleeves and so this worked out perfectly. I've already worn this sweater so much. It is my go-to if I'm going out for dinner, going to a concert, going to a comedy show. I just think it looks so chic. I love it. It is a perfect like semi-cropped length so I can wear it with like high-waisted pants and it fits just perfectly. Um, I could also tuck it in if I wanted to. I am just beyond obsessed <laughs> with this shirt. I already have plans to make a second one out of um, linen quill in a mohair but I just love this combination. I love the simplicity of this broken rib here. I just I'm obsessed with this sweater. I think it's perfect. It is a little bit with the exposed arms, a little bit um, chilly in like the coldest of winter days, but I think the mohair keeps you pretty warm. And um, if you're going somewhere, obviously you're wearing a jacket anyway. I think the next one that I'm making though will be with a full sleeve. So I'm interested to see which I end up wearing more. But I just love this pattern. It goes by so fast because once you're done the um, the yoke, you're basically on to just stocking it of the body. And I really love the way that that was broken up. Oh, and it's a garter ridge here which mimics the garter ridge here. I mean, it's just so intentional all around and I love, love, love the way that this sweater turned out. Next, I made a practicality unit. It is these hand warmers. They are from the Watch Cap and Mitts pattern by Pearl Soho. And this is in the Creative Knitter DK yarn that they actually sent to me. It is a stunning orange color. I have more of this yarn. I might even just make another one of these. Um, or a hat or something to go with it. I also have a yarn that they sent me which is the worsted of the same base that I might just make another pair of these in because I love them. I don't often wear superwash and so I knew if I was going to use a superwash yarn I wanted something that was going to be used a little more heartily to really take advantage of that superwash chemicals that was on them and I wear these all the time. They are perfect. Um, I did have to make some modifications so that the hand was small enough, but the thumb hole was big enough, but I think it turned out just fine. And yeah, it's looking a little wonky. I never ended up uh, uh, blocking these, so the ribbing does look a little bit wonky on them, but it's fine. They're in jackets anyway, <laughs> um, and I think for the next one that I make, I will probably make them go up to about here. Um, just because I wish the arm was a little bit longer, just to keep me a little bit warmer. I do find that it tends to kind of come up a little bit, um, and so I would love to fix that for my next one. But these are the only mitts that I've ever made, and because of that, they've been getting a lot of wear, and I'd love to make more of them in the future. The last finished sweater of the year is this beautiful sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is knit in Ficolana Arveta and Drops Kids Love Mohair. And I can't believe that I actually started this sweater in Copenhagen where I bought the yarn for this. And it took me a long time to finish. It is all over cabling. I think it's a beautiful design. Drop shoulder, which I think is my favorite look on me. Um, I a lot of people say that a drop shoulder isn't very flattering. I find it quite flattering on me. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, it's in a beautiful like sagey, like toes the line between sage and mint green. And I really love the straight sleeves on this. I love the bagginess of it, the drape of it. Um, I just find that the neckline's a little bit tight for me. I don't know why that is. I also find that this thing sheds like crazy. <laughs> so I almost exclusively wear it with my faux leather pants just because I can wipe off the mohair a lot more easier. Um, but I have since used Kid Silk Mohair in another knit and I don't find that it sheds nearly as much. So whatever is in this color of the Drops Kid Silk Mohair has been shedding way too much for me to adequately enjoy this sweater. And so I would love to make it, this is like a fingering in a mohair. I would love to see what it look like in a DK weight because I really love the design of it. I just think that, I don't know, it's not my, the sweater that I reach the most for. I mean, I love it. I definitely wear it. I just don't reach for it over some of my other sweaters, which is unfortunate. Um, and it's definitely made me 
reconsider how much mohair I want to be using in my knits. Feels like all of the most beautiful knits lately are designed with mohair and so I keep reaching for it. But I find that my knits with mohair, my tulip Guernsey aside, are not always my favorite knits. And so I've kind of had to think about my relationship with mohair, you know, just the average thing that your knitter thinks about. But I think that's kind of really lovely. Anyway, I really like the design of this at the very least, and I'd be interested to try it again. Okay, this is the last of my fully finished knits of this year, and it's one that I haven't even shown in the podcast yet. So this is an exclusive. Um, this is a broken rib hat pattern that I designed myself, cast on 60 stitches, did about two and a half inches of the rib, and then switched to a broken rib and decreased to the crown. Um, I love this hat, put a little palm on it. It is in a cereal pack of yarn that is local to me that I found at my local farmer's market, and it is the softest yarn I've ever felt. I knit this in a night. Um, the yarn was just looking at me and I was like, you know what, you need to be a hat. And it did. I love this hat. I've been wearing it nonstop since I knit it. I knit it, I think Christmas Eve night. I sat down and knit it, wore it for Christmas. It is delightful. Love the color, love the palm, love the design. This is my new favorite fast knit pattern. I created a few of these for Christmas. I have not included any of my Christmas knits here because I don't have them anymore and I think it's really boring to like show a photo. I feel like the whole point of this is like look at the things that I'm wearing. Um, <laughs> but uh, check out the podcast if you want to see, especially the last podcast, if you want to see everything that I knit for other people this year because um, there was a considerable amount. But yeah, um, this is just delightful and I will definitely be making more of this. I think this will be my go-to hat pattern for bulky weight yarns and anything worse than a below. I'm still committed to my muscle burrow pattern because I just, I love the way that that turns out. Now I have to kind of finish objects. I'm not going to show all my whips in this because you will see them in my 2023 video, but I have one that's not completely finished that I'm very sure that I'm going to finish this year. And I have one that is still a whip, but I've been wearing. So I will show that to you as well. So this is the Moby pullover, Moby sweater. It's by Petite Knit. It is a beautiful cabled pattern. And I am knitting this in Hawthorne designs daylights by someone <laughs> it's a beautiful yarn it's in the color caffeine it's a beautiful like natural colored speckled yarn and I think that this with this pattern is beautiful I've enjoyed knitting this so much but then I got onto gift knits and I got onto um like some test knits as well and I had to put this thing on hold but I put on hold just as I was finishing the body and I said you know what this actually makes a really nice slip over and so I finished it off I like weaved in all the ends and I've been wearing it as a slip over does it look a little unfinished like the edges are obviously not cleaned up because I need to pick them up and make a sweater out of it yeah but I actually don't mind it I've been wearing it as a slip over constantly and I love it it's making me realize that I really need a slip over in my wardrobe that I have a lot of use for it um but yeah so I've just been wearing it like this <laughs> um I've got a couple more things that I need to finish up and then I'll probably pull this to put some sleeves on it because I really do want it as a sweater and I've got the yarn for it and I don't want to waste that yarn um but I think I will be making probably not a slipover of this pattern. It's not intended for that, but I will definitely have a slipover in my future because the amount that I've been wearing this as a slipover tells me that I have a hole in my wardrobe that can only be filled by a slipover. So I don't know if I want it in this color, if I want it in like a darker color, but those are future problems for me to figure out. If I stand like this, it looks like a finished object, but in reality, Bum, bum, bum. I haven't finished it there. <laughs> this is um, a test it for Ozetta. It's the first time I've tested for her. It's the port sweater. It has a beautiful detailing on the arm of this beautiful ribbing here. It's got a mock neck or funnel neck at the top and extended ribbing on the bottom in the sleeves. I am knitting this in uh, Twin Oaks fiber which is local to me and it's definitely more of a rustic wool but I have steam blocked just the body of it and I think 
that it is going to soften beautifully. Um, so I just finished the arm last night and this took me only about two hours because again, Ozetta's patterns hit me like mid upper arm in the body. So the sleeves went by pretty fast. I think there's only like 60 stitches, 60 rounds, not stitches obviously, 60 rounds in that sleeve. So I think that I'm gonna finish this one by the end of the year, hopefully. <laughs> so, um, I think that this will be a 2022 knit, but I'm filming this on the 29th, so I've still got a couple of days to go, and um, there seems like a 50-50 chance that my New Year's plans are going to fall through due to illness and other things, and so I might be knitting on this for my New Year's Eve, <laughs> um, so that's okay, uh, but... Yeah, I, I am convinced that this will get done. Probably not blocked by the time the new year is over, but it will definitely be knit by the time this year is over. So yeah, I'm really loving the way that it's looking. I think that it will be a um, very nice basic, my wardrobe. It's just one of those patterns that's so easy to throw on or seems so easy to throw on. And once I have a warm arm, I think I'll be wearing it a lot. I really just love the way that the pickup is done. Look at how seamless that is. So beautiful. I'll show you on the finished arm. Look at that. Beautiful. When that blocks out, it will be perfect. So yeah, I guess I'll finish up in the sweater. That is pretty much everything that I knit in 2022. I missed out on my gift knits. So go back to my last podcast if you want to see those before I ended up gifting them to people. Um, this year has been such an incredible year. I started test knitting. I started YouTubing. Um, I started on Instagram for the first time and so I thank you so so much for joining me and for everyone who's shown even the smallest morsel of support in this past year. It has meant the world. Um, this year has been such a whirlwind with starting YouTube, with um, being in Europe for six weeks, with um, really like getting into my PhD and buying our own house, um, which is where you are now. It is been one of the craziest years of my life and it's been so rewarding and it's honestly really really hard um and so I'm really looking forward to what 2023 has to bring I feel like I've laid a lot of foundation in this year that will send me forward into 2023 and I have high hopes for 2023 being um if not a restful year perhaps less of a stressful year um for me um I feel like I've tried to build a lot of rhythms and one of my goals in January this year is to bring you along with building some more of those rhythms to set me up for a really good year ahead. Um, I'm looking into rebuilding some mindsets and rebuilding some bad patterns that I've made including in my knitting um, and so I'm excited to bring you along with me on that journey. So if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed what I like to knit, please hit subscribe. I do mostly knitting podcasts on this channel, but I have some fun things coming out, including a video all about test knitting, um, a video in creating this craft room will be coming out soon, and um, some like knit and chats as well. So I'm really excited to continue making some content on here. And again, thank you so, so much for everyone who's joined me along this journey. It has been so lovely meeting so many of you. And um, I just really want to thank you for being along here in 2022. I hope you have a lovely new year and I'll see you next time. Bye.